Today I want to talk to you about hybrid media materialities. And in a way, I'm just taking some of the space that, that you've been opening up in such an interesting way around the technology, around the glass, around the visualization in the space, and to look at it from a slightly different angle. Now, uh, the first slide that I'm showing is from one of our graduate students at OCAD University. And it's a slide from a, a 360 degree visualization of uh, the Canadian Detention Center system. And it basically portrays the end of life experience of a woman who committed suicide, a uh, Mexican migrant within that system. Now this slide is a different artist. This is David McIntosh. And he is using, uh, he's creating a network performance between Cusco in Peru and Buenos Aires in Argentina based on the Kipu Kamayak, which is a Andean traditional cultural form of writing that involved tying knots. The performers are dancers and musicians and they're collaborating from between these two spaces uh, in, if you change the slide, in a third space, they're controlling these avatars. And what I think is important, just to pause for a moment and talk about the idea of materialities, is in the case of the first slide that I showed, the materiality that we're investigating is the affective experience of being in detention. It's also about revealing uh, an aspect of the everyday that we don't normally see, which is the detention system in Canada. Now this is, what it's doing is taking two locations and forging a collaboration in a third space, which was live on the internet, anyone could watch it, I watched it from Toronto. And the avatars, I think it's important to point out, don't look like people, they look like threads in this instance. Uh, so now we can move on uh, to the next slide. This is a video, so if you could start the video and maybe turn the lights. <laughs> I'm going to talk while the video is happening. Uh, this is a workshop at Zayed University in Dubai that I conducted using a point cloud camera that we've developed in our lab. And what's interesting about this is that the meaning of the apparatus is, in a way, uh, discovered anew by different cultural participants. So if we can, you can continue, but turn it up a little louder. What about, it's the most important is that if we don't want to show our faces, it's a little hard for you to hear, so maybe. For interviewing for yeah. something like she had. See, interview with her, like if she don't want to take yes. her face, she can like the voice with their, with their actions. Exactly, you can show yourself without showing your faces. Yeah. So it's operating like a kind of a virtual head covering. Yeah, um, as a mask. Also as a mask. Okay, so we can stop now. So what was discovered by the workshop participants in Zayed University is that the technology uh, could be used not just to show the details of your face or to reveal uh, your physical telepresence, but to disguise your face, to cover your face and yet reveal your gesture. So I think it's an important insight and one that's driven a lot of the way that I've developed this system as we go along. So now I have another short video to show you. This is from my lab in Toronto, but I did a similar exhibition at CHI in San Jose last, last spring. Turn the lights. Now you can turn the volume down. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. What you're seeing here are point clouds these are images that are captured with an ordinary action pro, like a Kinect, and they're recorded. They're three-dimensional, time-based images. So the background images are pre-recorded images, and depending upon what sort of point you enter the ONI file from, they look completely different. In the foreground, that's uh, Aboriginal dancer, two-spirited dancer, Cody Ottertail Berry, who's engaging with the pre-recorded imagery. His image is influenced with purlin noise, which has been a very big component. It's a sort of secret sauce in a lot of what we've been doing with these applications because what purlin noise allows us to do is to create a relationship between the active and inactive dots within the point cloud itself. So uh, we can, I guess, 
it, you know, you can see it, that he's interacting with trees. Those are images from his traditional land near Quetico Park in northwestern Ontario. So again, the cultural participant is bringing his own point of view based upon his, uh, well, how he, from his own embodied material context, finds meaning in the in the system. Uh, now, if we could stop the video, I'll just uh, we'll now move to discussing a different form of output. This kind of output is uh, interactive media installations. Um, now, if we move to the next slide, that's me with my collaborator from China. His name is Fei Jun, and we collaborate together as Gesture Cloud. And we're doing an installation here in the Frankfurt train station. It's a very big version of a, of a, a depth camera installation that involves skeletal tracking. We're using the ordinary Connect there, uh, Connect One. But What's interesting about this site at this time is that it was basically a detention center for Syrian refugees who were being processed to enter Germany and being kept in tents in the train station itself, in a tented area where the, where the uh, processing station was located. So what that meant, if we turn to the next slide, um, what it meant was that when people encountered our installation, it served a different kind of function. In this case, it was sort of like a babysitter. There was a lot of, of traffic of mothers and kids. It became a kind of a meeting spot and also a place uh, where kids could entertain themselves by watching other people just gesturally interacting with the installation. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Now I'm going to talk about a different form of output, which is still images. Uh, I wanted to make this point in terms of AR, just this, that we talk a lot about how we will see the virtual objects in the physical world, but little about how we might change the physical world to accommodate the virtual objects. And I think this is important. So this summer, this is an early version of a print made from the vector graphics, from skeletal tracking, from the installation that we had in Frankfurt. Every single shot, basically five seconds, then it refreshes, it's another five seconds. It's like a Etienne Jules Marais, five second uh, motion capture of time in one image. It records every one of them in a tiny little PDF file. So we have hundreds of thousands of them. For one. Now, if we go to the next, because these are vector graphics, they're scalable. So this, is a de the, this triptych of prints is a detail of the knee joint in the same piece of skeletal tracking that you saw before. These have sold, um, they're beautifully printed in archival form, and selling these prints in limited editions has helped to subsidize my programming activity. Anyway, if we go to the next one, this is something that, instead of my, just to speak about Pokemon Go for a quick second, um, I completely uh, agree with the idea of getting outside and engaging with the actual lived world. My own area of interest is urban wildlife. I did my master's thesis on, digital, on urban foxes and digital geographies. And this is, Pigeon Trajectory is a photograph of pigeons lifting off from a driveway in downtown Toronto. Uh, it, the uh, lines that you see, are again, through the Pearl and Noise interventions, we see the trajectories of the birds as they lift off. So it's a way of seeing what's already there. It's something very banal and everyday, but seeing it through a, a different lens that involves a sense of its gestural um, qualities. I think, yeah, just a final slide then. Uh, this is the interface system. I meant to bring the camera down and show it to you, but it's just a little Action Pro that we've been using. It's, it's very much like the Connect One, but it plugs in uh, using USB so we can use it more easily in the field. And we've been developing this system over several years and several programmers, and this summer we intend to maximize it for the production of 2D and 3D prints with the intent of making things that are sort of like gobos, if you understand theater, things that, like Venetian blinds in a way, only working with the sun and with, the, uh, with this kind of digital imaging that we're able to do using uh, the manipulation of the point clouds. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>